Hello and welcome to London Olympians versus Farnham Knights here at Askians RFC. Uh, my name is Will and my co-commentator today, let him introduce himself. <laughs> it's Aaron Griffiths, nice to be here. Okay, hello, welcome. Um, two teams struggling to stay up in the Premiership South this year, but it should be a close fought match today and hopefully we can see some good American football. Kick off from Farnham Knights. Run back by Luke Hegney. And he's found a uh, brought down. Okay, so the Olympians are going to start their first offensive series. That was Hegney on the return. He had a he had a huge game in the first matchup this season between these two teams. Mm -hmm. Lots of catches, lots of yards. Hopefully, uh, we can see a repeat today definitely be a key man for the knights to stop absolutely so it looks like artem bachmanid is starting at qb today uh no i believe that that Oh, sorry, no, it's Arthur Flaho, number 12, the QB. Hands it off. Good gain on first down. Flaho is a, is a player who didn't play in the first matchup a few weeks ago. He's going to be a, a real test for the Farnham Knights. Had a great game last week in a losing effort against the Warriors. Mm -hmm. Really uses his mobility well to make space, doesn't he? Former so the, French youth player. Uh -huh. First first down of the day, then. Hands it off again. Short yardage gain there from number 49, Adrian John. John is an institution around the Olympians. He's been here since 2006. That's a long time. And again then for second down, looks like second and seven. Flaho drops back to pass, rolls out to his right. And finds Luke Hegney with the completion and another first down. That's exactly what we're talking about. His mobility is going to be key today. Mm -hmm. Over the middle there, the great slant route. Moving the chains again. Knights are going to have to put a little pressure on uh, Flaho today. Mm -hmm. If their D-line can push through and find some gaps and get to the quarterback, then cause him some problems. But without that, they're going to struggle. It could be a long day. In the last match, the Olympians scored six first half touchdowns and nine in the second half. So the Knights will be looking to build on the, the second half performance from last time round. Yeah. And their most recent couple of records, they've been looking much stronger than they did at the beginning of the season. So it should be a close fought match today. Hand it off again to the running back. Couple of yards. Going to be second and eight from about the 35 yard line. Back in the shotgun, Flaho takes it, throws it out to the slant. And we've got Mark running out of bounds there. To bring up third down. Little screen pass to the wide receiver, Mark. Uses his strength to get past a couple of defenders and yeah, gets out of bounds. Good pursuit from the Knights though.
slow and steady driving up the field here from the Olympians. Don't look too rushed with what they're doing at the moment, but keeping it calm, pushing the ball down the field. Third and one. And it off, finds a crease outside and finds the space enough for the first down. Again, Adrian John rumbling forwards. Outside zone run from Adrian John almost gets stops in the back in the backfield. It turns up field, great first down. Almost into the red zone here from the Olympians. Flahau in the shotgun again. Oh, dropped the snap, but he's managed to recover it, but brought down in the end there in the backfield, a sack from the Farnham Knights. First sack of the match there. A loss of yards for the Olympians. Slightly oh. low snap, couldn't handle it. The pressure came through fast. Flaho still managed to evade the first defender, but couldn't get past the rest of them. So here we are with second and 16. Pressure on to get some points after a good first drive from the Olympians. Another dropped snap, but Flaho manages to get the pass away. Oh, and it's whistled dead. Knee just touched the yeah. ground there. Mark with the catch, but couldn't quite hold his footing. Finishing off drives has been a bit of an issue for the Olympians. They drove down the field several times against the Warriors last week, but came away with only one touchdown on the day. Yeah, the red zone offense definitely is something that the team has been looking to try and improve on. Coming away with as many points as possible from the drives that they have. I know it sounds obvious, but obviously that's how you win football matches. You've got to score points. So here we are. It's going to be third down, third and long. Jobs back. Pressure on again. Green. A catch from the running back, and he's going to have to push forward to get some yards there. It's brought down short, the first down marker. I like that call, though. Screen pass on third and long. Try and get a bit closer for possibly a field goal attempt. I'm not sure whether that's what they're going for or not at the moment. Good tackling from the Farnham Knights to stop the running back from managing to get to the did first a great down. Job. He shed, shed the block, made the tackle. Awesome ten. And it looks like the Olympians are going to go for it. And the pass out to the receiver. The Olympians are oh, race stretching all the way. Might have even got to the touchdown there on fourth and long. Angel Marin with a catch there. And that looks like, oh, we've got a flag. Celebrations for the Olympians. They think they've got it. Let's see what the refs say. After play is over, delay of game, 85 offense, and five yard penalty be assessed on the try, because of the play was a touchdown. And that's a touchdown to the Olympians then. Six nothing here in the first quarter. After a Shaky end to that drive there with a couple of dropped snaps, but managed to pull it away with a fourth and long and managed to go all the way for the touchdown. Yeah, Angel was uh, one on one there on the outside. Nice little pass on the hook. Great finishing from the receiver. I think that's his first touchdown of the season, so I'll be very happy with that. Plays over, plays over. Yeah, the Olympians are looking for several players to step up today. They're missing their, their number two receiver, Jack Burling. 
We're going to need to see uh, players like Angel step up there to maintain the pro productivity they've been having so far. Looks like the uh, extra point there was unsuccessful, so it's going to be 6 0 to the Olympians here in the first quarter. And let's see what the final Knights can do to respond to that. How do you think they're going to fare against our offense today? I think the, the key for Farnham is to really establish their ground game. I, I, in, in the last game, their passing, their passing attack really struggled to make much of an in, impact. They do have a, a very powerful running back in Aaron Sekulor, and I think they're going to need to get him rolling if they're to have any chance of keeping up with the Olympians today. Absolutely. And uh, likewise, how do you think the uh, Olympians might be able to stop the Knights from scoring points against them? They need another performance like they had last time around, so they're going to have to bring the pressure, stop Sequillo, and uh, and I think they should be okay. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, on a on the linebackers today to try and make some big tackles in the backfield and hopefully stop the Farnham Knights from managing to get any yards. If you're an Olympians fan, of course, which I'm afraid we both are today. Yes, we're we're a, we're a guest commentary crew here from the uh, from the home side, uh, but we're very grateful for the Knights uh, for giving us this opportunity. And the uh, kickoff from Victor Alameda goes back for a touchback. The Knights will start on the 20-yard line. So now the Farnham Knights prepare for their first offensive drive of the day. Olympians looking to bring pressure. Drops back, the pass up the middle, and it's intercepted on the first play of the day from the Olympians. I'm not sure who that was. That's Joel uh, Chunza. Oh, wow, straight away. He, uh, he tends to have great games against the Farnham Knights. He had two interceptions in the last game uh, of the, the, the previous season and, a, and another one in their meeting earlier this season. And he also plays receiver, so he might be looking to get points on both sides of the ball today. That's definitely not what the Farnham Knights wanted to start their day today. There was an opportunity there. If the ball had come high over the top, it could have been a big play, but it's just a little short. Yeah, it looks like the defender really wanted it as well. It was high hey, pointing oh, the ball there. He really there. pounced on that one. So the Olympians are going to take the ball here and an uh, opportunity for more points early in the game. And here we are, first down then on the 30 yard line. Screen pass out to Mark. The receiver manages to make some space, break a couple of tackles, and he's brought down far enough for a first down. The Olympians have obviously seen something on the film. That's the third time they've gone to that play already. He's getting a lot screen. of spi space here on the outside, isn't he? Yeah, I think the, the cornerbacks are giving him a bit of space. And they're, In they're, the flat, yeah. They're going to throw those short screens until the cornerbacks step up. Let's see if the Olympians can capitalize on their field position here with some more points early in the first quarter. Blaho in the shotgun again. First down. Takes a snap, toss play out to Adrian John, manages to hold on to it and bustles forward for, oh, in fact, he's still on, he's still on his feet. <laughs> I thought he was brought down there for a second, but no, he manages to keep moving. AJ's a, a, a big load of a player. You, you, you want to see him going up and down the field, not sideways. He managed to turn the corner there. Holding, offense number 89. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. It's going to be a holding on Jamie Gallagher there, unfortunately. It's going to be a first and 20 now for the London Olympians. Negates those yards created by the running back, but 
hopefully they can carry on, find some more space with the next few plays. So first and 20 now. Flaho takes the snap, is looking deep, throws it over the middle, but it's picked off by Farnham. I think that was in and out of the hands of the receiver. Yeah. Mark. So an interception for both sides. Puts us back where we were. Farnham will be very happy to be able to get their first offensive drive back. And hopefully they can do a better job on this one than they did in the first one. It's a good pass from the quarterback. The receiver just can't hang on. We'll try and get a Farnham Knights roster. Yeah, we, we have been looking for one. We're unable to get one at the moment. So uh, apologies for not knowing all the players' names. <laughs> sure some of you watching will know the players very well. There's a flag on the play here. Offside, defense number three, five yard penalty, replay first down. There's Liam Brown offside there, so first down, five yard penalty, gonna be first and five. Jonathan Cobham on the uh, play that was called back. He had a huge game in their first encounter. He's a middle linebacker at the heart of the Olympians' defense. A uh, toss out to the flat for Farnham, managed to find some space on the outside, pushed out of bounds before the first down. Gets the ball to the running back really quickly there. Manages to get outside the defender and get a bit of space. The chins are on the stop again. Having a good game so far. Looks like second and five here. Handed off again and tackled immediately there. That's Mike Amaru. Coming off the edge fast. So big number 56 there in the middle of your screen is the head coach of the Farnham Knights playing today. Pass out wide, batted away there by Liam Brown. Good defending from the Olympians. That's a, that seems to be a favorite pass to play of the Knights. They went to the, uh, the, the short out many times in the first encounter the right tackle here he does a good job QB always has his eyes to that spot defender reads it and gets there first third down now for the Farnham Knights sorry fourth down they're gonna punt uh, Luke Hegney back to receive he had a punt return call back a, a touchdown call back in the first game Oh, fumbled snap. It looks like the punter is going to struggle to get this away, but he does. And Hegney has the ball. He's running up the sideline. Big hit there. But he holds onto the ball, and the uh, Olympians are going to take the ball on halfway line. Good field position for the O's. Um, 
I say, it's always a, always a pleasure to watch uh, the maroon and white against the light blue and red. These are two teams that have uh, had a long rivalry. Yeah, throughout the different divisions that they've been in, they've uh, always fought hard they against fought, each other. Uh, they fought back-to-back -back, uh, national title games in 2004, 2005, of course. Were you playing back in those days? No, I, I wasn't, but I remember watching some <laughs> of those games. Uh, I was playing for the Essex Spartans at the time, uh -huh. if, you're, if you're wondering. I, I later played for the Olympians. <laughs> okay, so the Olympians then. Flaho with the pass, the screen pass out to the right. Brought down very quickly this time. Looks like the Knights might be onto that. Hegney with the catch completion, but no real gain. Good pressure from the Knights defense this time. They've seen a few of these screens now. They're going to be starting to step up on them. Second and eight for the London Olympians. Handed off to AJ, who's rumbling forwards again, evading tackles, but managing to be brought down a few yards short of the first down. Could be a busy day for AJ. The, the Olympians missing a couple of their running backs today through injury and absence. Unfortunately, that's that time of the season where injuries start to take their toll, as I know. Yeah, well, you played a uh, receiver and kicker for this team before you get injured. I did, yes. For an, for an entire game. Third down. Laho rolls out to his left, signaling to his players to try and make some space, but he's going to run it himself, and he's going to get more than the first down. Plenty of yards there, and he's brought out of bounds around the 20-yard line. Those long legs really do like to stretch out and get some yards when he needs them. Holding, offense number 72, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, replay third down. Uh, holding call against the Olympians there, it's going to be third and 14. See Flo's uh, mobility here, gets out the pocket, but it's time to look around. And turns on the speed. Fortunate for the Knights there that we had a indiscipline with the Olympians offensive line, unfortunately. So here we are, third and long. Oh, back to pass. Rolls out again. There's pressure on from the defense. Gets the pass out. The ball is high. And taken by Luke Hegney, who's going to run it all the way into the end zone. What a touchdown from the London Olympians. Oh. Wow, that could have gone either way. It really could have. I think Hegney wanted it more there. Uh, stretched up, high pointed the ball, and left the defender on the floor. He's been a massive signing for the Olympians this year. They lost a couple of receivers to, to Europe and to other teams. They've signed some really good receivers this season. Really good work from the QB there. See, Flaho manages to push away the defender and get the long pass downfield over the head of the defensive back and just snatched out of the air by Luke Hegney. And once he's got the ball there, you know he's gonna finish the job. Olympians going for two? Going for two here, yeah. Laho back in the shotgun again. AJ in the backfield. Arthur rolls out, and unfortunately, it's off the hands, bad away by the defenders. Still going to be 12 0 here in the first quarter at Askian's RFC. Off the helmet there of Angel, Angel Marin. So how can the Farnham Knights respond now? They're 12 points down, halfway through the, well, most of the way through the first quarter. 
They need to find a way to start moving the ball on offense. They need to, at the very least, give their defense a bit of a rest and hopefully put some points on the board too. Mm -hmm. In the first game, they got they got two touchdowns, both uh, from the defense. One was an interception return, a pick six. The other was the defense recovering a fumble deep in uh, Olympian's territory uh, to give the offense a very short drive. So they're going to have to have that defense uh, make some plays again if they're yeah. going to get back in this game. Absolutely. If they can, if they can score some points themselves, that will definitely take the pressure off their offense if their defense can get some points. Um, and as you say, if their offense can stay on the field, they can give the defense a rest and give them a chance to recover from the endless barrage that has been the uh, Olympians offense so far without that they're gonna soon tire and the Olympians may end up racking up a very high score not much of a return Simon David bringing down the uh, returner there So the Knights on their own 20-yard line. Callum Brown, I believe, the quarterback in the shotgun. Steps up with a big pass and batted away. Tendaya Dabengwa with the Great vital play. play. He's, a, he's a really classy player. One of the best players on this Olympian team. Very hard to complete passes against him. Steps in front of the post route here. Prevents a big game. Good stretching arm, managing to break that up. Going to be second and 10 for the Farnham Knights. Ball over the middle, but to no one in particular. Trying to hit that post route. Going to leave the Farnham Knights in a third and long situation here. Or is it second and ten? We have it. Oh no, it is third and ten. Third down. A bit slow from the chain crew. Gary Whitfield, the uh, Olympians general oh, manager. Oh, that was close. Laid out from the receiver there, but couldn't quite make the completion. Looks frustrated with himself. That was almost exactly what the Knights needed to get back in this game. A huge play down the left there. And now they're going to have to drop back to punt again. See the QB manages to get space, get the ball away. And the receiver completely has the defender beaten, but well, couldn't they've got bring a, the ball they've got away. a receiver against a linebacker there, which is obviously exactly what they were looking for, but they just couldn't connect on that. Yeah, that's the matchup they wanted. Couldn't make it happen. Back to punt now from the Farnham Knights. Snap. Oh, another tricky one to gather and a, a low punt. But it looks like it might go. Oh, no, Hegney's picked it up and he's found some space. Going. He's, going. he's got some speed up there and it's going to be causing them some real problems if he can keep on his feet here. Oh, no, really he didn't want to go down there. Excellent return from Luke Hegney. He's a real impact player for the Olympians. The Knights have to find a way of stopping him. Those long snaps on their punts have been causing them some problems so far. See Hegney here, really gets up to speed, breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, gets some blocks out in front and really just just leg drive there, just does not want to go down, does he? Powerful running from the number 10. So now the Olympians get the ball in great field position. Looks like 20 yard line, some red zone offense. At the end of the first quarter here, looks like the Olympians might have a chance to come away with yet more points. 
not what the Knights wanted at the start of this oh, match. It's a crucial drive for the Knights' defense here. They have to get some kind of stop. Laho with time, lofts it up into the corner, and a great catch there from Angel Marin. Thinks he's got in for a touchdown, and yes, the refs have given it. There we go. Second touchdown of the day for that man. On his first start of the year, and two touchdowns already. Way to make an impact, Angel. Beautifully thrown ball on the uh, the fade route from Flau. And it looks like the Olympians are going to go for just the one this time. We've got coach Al Tate to kick. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be Victor Olamidi kicking today. The famous toe poke. Super effective, though. Don't knock it. And it's successful. So that takes us to 19 nil here in the first quarter. Big Tolomini's been uh, kicking, kicking extra points for the Olympians for many years. I mm -hmm. remember I'm doing that in 2008, I think. 2008. Wow, as long as that. I'm just getting a, a shout out from Victor there. Victor is the, uh, the, the Olympians players player of last season. He's a, he's a real character as as he team. always is. Yes, yes, heart and soul of this team. Character as big as his frame, that man. <laughs> and that's big. So here we are to kick again. Al Tate actually taking off the kickoff duties now. Give Victor a rest. I think one play in a, in a row is enough for him, don't you? <laughs> it's, it's awesome to see Tate kicking. Tate. Uh, some people may know that he he played for the Olympians back in the mid 90s in the glory years, won a Euro Bowl with mm -hmm. the Olympians. When uh, the Olympians were the team to beat. Uh, he went on to play for the London Monarchs, and he's uh, he's a uh, he's a receivers coach here he's and a, kicking coach and the kicking coach, and he's uh, he's put his kit back on to do some kicking today. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be uh, Farnham Knights' offensive ball now just shy of the 30-yard line. Hopefully they can put a drive together and start moving the ball down the field because we want to see a competitive game today, don't we? We want to have it a little bit close but exciting. Yeah, I'd love to see the Knights start giving the ball to Sequillo. I think he's the strength of their offense. Let's see what they choose to do here. We're going to drop back to pass again over the middle and it looks picked. No, incomplete. Uh, they're going to call it incomplete. It's unfortunate for the... Um, Olympians defensive back, number 24, George Moore Arthur. Thought he'd yeah. managed to pull off a great play. Nice no, trying to hit these slants and posts, but it's just not working for them. I, I think because the Olympians don't line up with a deep safety, they think the middle's open, but the uh, corners are just swooping in on these. So unlucky there from George Moore Arthur. Did really well to get down to it, but couldn't quite keep it off the turf. So we're going to be second and 10 for the final Knights. And like you say, we want to see them if they're going to start running the ball. Oh, it's whistled dead there. Got a flag. If they could start handing that ball off to Sequala, they've got a chance to make a real impact up the middle through the defensive off. line of the Olympians. Offense number 13, five-yard penalty. Replay second down. That's really not going to help them there. A five-yard penalty against the Farnham Knights offense moves it back to second and 15. What a false start. Not sure who it was exactly. Back to the live action here, second and 15. Callum Brown in the shotgun again, takes it, drops back to pass, airs it out, and it's kicked again. off by the London Olympians. Tendaya Davengua moving it back. A great play from the Olympians. 
defense really making plays today for the London Olympians, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, but that's nice. 15 and 42 in a high-low combination. That penalty is declined. Because all the plays are first down. The Knights are really throwing the ball up a bit here. They, they, they need to mix in some of the running games. Yeah, they're so. taking some risks, but if they just get a few yards on each play, like you say, with that running game, they can give themselves some space. Whereas if they're second and long, third and long, and they have to air it out every time, the defenders are going to know what to do. They're going to be there ready, aren't they? Yeah, and and as someone who who trained a lot against this guy, Tendai Devengua, just just don't throw it. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get much luck there. You need to look for those matchups like they had earlier with the receivers versus the linebackers. If you get those kinds of opportunities, then you've got much better chance of making completions down the field. But when you have such a strong running back as Farnham Knights do, you'd expect them to try and run the ball more. It is a mystery to me. First time I saw Sir play was in 2016, and he ran all over the Olympians in a 36-0 victory for the Knights that day. I'd like to see uh, the Knights at least try to get him going. Arthur here on the QB run, pitches it out left. Manages to get a few yards there. Again, the Olympians start with the ball in the Farnham Knights half. Yep, the whole game has been played in the Knights half so far. Nice little option pitch there. I feel sorry for the spectators down the other end of the field. I think it's your family down there, isn't it? Watching, can't <laughs> yes. see any of the game. Yeah, there's not that many spectators here today, but I've got a... They're all sitting at the wrong end of the pitch, though. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in the next quarter they might get to watch some action. So the London Olympians here, second and five. Handed off to AJ. Stopped by the defensive line there. Not much there that time. Good tackles. Didn't want to let him go. Manages to get through the block and like a nice low tackle, holds onto his legs. Time's expired in the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter here at Askins RFC. London Olympians, they lead 19 points to nil. Do you think they can keep up the pace that we've seen so far? Well, that's a good question. In the, uh, I, I keep referring to this first game of the, the season, but in that game, uh, the Olympians scored 37 points in the first half and two in the second. Mm -hmm. so, so the Knights can slow them down, but the, the key is going to be getting some offensive production going in the second. In second that first quarter. match, of course, the London Olympians, they decided in the second half to give some of their other players a, a bit of a run out. We've actually got quite a lot of those players playing already here today. Like I say, some injuries on the uh, offense have left some players uh, playing who played in that first match towards the end of the match, but they managed to do a lot better today than they were in the uh, second half of the first game of the season. Yeah, Olympians have a, a lot of options in this, uh, the school position positions on offense. A lot of depth, yeah. A lot of depth. Knights really need to start winning at the line of scrimmage if they're to get any luck, because the Olympians so many people they can they can spread the ball around to. Just going back to what we were saying before about these teams having played national championships in the past, uh, the Knights uh, ended the Olympians' great run of what was it, eight consecutive national champions in, in 2004. That was one of the uh, of the great moments in football history. And it's nice to see these two teams competing at the highest level of UK American football, isn't it? Yeah, both have, have, have their ups and downs and been down to lower divisions in the intervening years, but they're both back in the premiership now. Laho here, plenty of time, way down the field, slightly overthrown there. That, that would have been a touchdown if he could have pulled that in. So much time for Arthur Flaho here. The Olympians' offensive line just not giving anything away. Beautiful projection there. That's what you love to see as a quarterback, oh, yeah. isn't it? it? It makes it makes playing quarterback position very easy when you've got that kind of time. The offensive line can really make a QB look good. Not that Arthur needs it. He makes himself look good. <laughs> Anchoring the uh, offensive line today is we've got number 71, Rich Balderson at centre. Here's a long-time Farnham Knights player. Yeah, in fact, I do believe he has a Farnham Knights tattoo on his calf. <laughs> is, the old is it, logo. Though, okay, so. is it showing or is he... 
worn socks today? I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, looks like it's covered up. Okay, that's a sensible, sensible decision. I don't know him. if he has an Olympian's tattoo. I might have to ask him. <laughs> yeah. AJ with the completion. Really doesn't want to go down, but eventually the uh, cavalry come running and... Ran that screen pass again. Uh, once again, it's sniffed out by one of the Bynum Lights linebackers. Much better from the defensive line this time, managing to break through and put pressure on Flaho. <laughs> Adrian John's taken a lot of snaps today, hasn't he, for a running back? He has. The Olympians don't have their, their number one running back, Andy Owusi, today. I think Maybe. Tolu Ogundana also seems to be out injured. Panasari, too. So we're down to two or three options at running back. I'm sure we'll see the others come on soon. We've got first down for the Farnham Knights here. Passed out right. Incomplete from the Farnham Knights. Again, going to that passing option. There's a space through the middle there for the running back as well. But Good pressure from the Olympians' defensive ends. Yeah, not giving them any time there. He's throwing it off his back foot, off balance, and it's always going to struggle to get the accuracy that he needs in that situation. Second and ten. Jobs back to pass again. Airs it out, going long. Incomplete. There's an opportunity there. Ball just coming up short. Yeah, it doesn't really give the uh, receiver much of a chance to make a play on the ball there. Once again, the Knights are in third and long. Leaving themselves in a situation where you think they probably have to pass after trying to pass on first and second down again. It does make defending much easier if you know what they're going to do. But they are going to toss it out and get oh, caught in the backfield for a loss of yards. Corbin. Corbin is all over the field. Making Great tackles. pursuit from the linebacker. Bring up a fourth and long. And it looks like they're going to have to punt again then. Luke Hegney back to receive. He's been dangerous there in the backfield. And let's see if he can uh, pull out another little magic trick here. As you said, he had a, a punt return called back in the first game due to a block in the back. So unfortunate for him. I'm sure he'll be looking to try and get one today. Much better snap. Blo blocked punt and pounced on by the Olympians. Another great starting field position. I think that was Hanif Bambi came through there. Number six. And Joel managing to recover the punt. Great work from the big number six. Speed puts, it, puts his body on the line. It's hit in the head by the ball. Oh, he came straight through that block. Yeah. Tunes are recovering. And yet again, the Olympians have excellent starting position for their drive. Barnum Knights actually had an opportunity to pin the Olympians back a little bit there, but couldn't take it. And now it's going to be first down on the 20 yard line. Waho. And up to Ben Amoaka. Fakes the pass there, fooled me. Good few yards there on first down. Ben Amawaka, as we said, having a snap at running back. He's been a good threat for the Olympians' offense this season. 
Yeah, Ben's, Ben's been playing for the Olympians for a number of years now, and he's a, he's a fearless runner. He's not the biggest guy, but he runs hard, puts his head down. Always manages to find a gap. It'd be a real nuisance for defences. They yeah. can't get their hands on him. Second and six now. Tight end set, it's going to be handed off to Ben again. Ben Amawaka running out to the left. No space through, unfortunately. Good lateral pursuit. I think that was number 85 for the Knights. Uh, he's made a few tackles today. It's a good quick handoff. It's a great play by number 85. He sheds the Titans block. Makes Gets the tackle wide, just before Ben can get around the corner. Absolutely. So here now, third and six for the London Olympians. Let's see what they can do here. I think it's about third and two. Excuse me, third and two, you're correct. This time passed over the middle, go, completed by, I think, was that Luke Hegney again? Would not surprise me if it was. No, Paris Parchment this time. Great reception from him. He's been a real asset to the London Olympics this season, both on offense and defense, playing defensive yeah, back. Two-way player, very talented athlete. I'd like to see him get involved more. Nice catch on the slant route. Runs into two defenders, but manages to hold onto the ball and get a first down for the London Olympians. It's going to be first and goal now. A couple of yards out. Olympians threatening another touchdown here in the first half. Let's see what they choose to do here. Arthur Flaho runs it in himself. And that's going to be another touchdown for the Olympians. That's what a mobile quarterback can bring you in the red zone. That, that extra option just to run the ball in. Nightmare for defenses when you've got a quarterback who can do that. Mm -hmm. Really tough to defend. Getting all the plaudits there, Arthur Flaho on the sideline. Takes the snap, sees a gap, hands off the D lineman. Puts his head down and just goes straight in. Makes it look easy. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. <laughs> yeah, Olamidi there to kick again and it's blocked and pounced on. Score saves it 25. <laughs> so, nine minutes left roughly in the uh, second quarter. Yeah, we should say this isn't the official clock. This yeah. is our, the estimation of the production team. We will let you know when we get the two-minute warning over here um, from the referees. Knights desperately in need of some kind of spark here. I think they really do need to just mix up their offensive game a little bit, don't you? I do, I do. It's, it's, it's not going to pay immediate dividends necessarily, but it's, it's going to give the Olympians something to think about at the moment they're not being tested at all and if they can get the Olympians to fall into some sort of pattern where they're uh, expecting the pass all the time they are going to open up options elsewhere and if they can take advantage of that they might have a chance to make a few plays short kickoff muffed but recovered eventually by the Farnham Knights It's often quite an effective strategy, isn't it? Kick it a bit short to one of the guys he's not expecting to catch yeah. it. Might not be used to catching the ball all that much. On special teams, you never know what position they play most of the time. It worked out all right there. The Olympians managed to stop any kind of return. But the Knights are going to start with the ball on around the 30-yard uh, around the 30-yard line. Anyway. So let's see what the Farnham Knights choose to do here. Callum Brown back to receive the ball. Takes a snap, drops back. Goes to the pass again outright. And it's completed this time, manages to shed the tackle, but brought down shy of the first down. 
Or they might give him it with forward progress, I'm not sure. It's going to be second and short here for the Farnham Knights. Stephen Godfrey on the reception there. Ooh. Throwing with pressure in his face. Manages to get it away. Receiver comes back for the pass. Receiver again, uh, defensive back again, a little bit greedy there, wanted to make a big play rather than make a tackle, I think. And now the running game. Look how dangerous he is. He's making real ground at the left hand side here before he's brought down eventually and taken out of bounds by number 54, Jonathan Cobb. Saquala, the running back. Defense number 93. That's the threat that they have in that position. The play brings up first down. Surprising that they've not gone to that more in this game so far. Very much so. Finds a real space up the middle there yeah, and then that, just... That looked like it was going to be a toss right, but he saw a lane, cut back, mm -hmm. turned it into a big game. Good work from Farnham there. Finally into the Olympians' territory. And they drop back to pass again. Throw it into complete. double coverage with a completion there. And another first down. <clears throat> Godfrey again here. Manages to find space out on the right-hand side. And pluck the ball out of the yeah. air. Three Olympians defenders around him, but here's the one who sees the ball first. Gets his head around and locates that ball. So now the Knights in the red zone. Toss out left to Sequala, but oh, manages to evade two tackles and then eventually is brought down back at the line of scrimmage, unfortunately. That's great work by Sequala. That looked like it was going to be a huge loss yeah. with Sam Willing about to make the tackle. He's done really well to make that a neutral game. Number 91, Willing, is a, is a rookie defensive end, had a great game in their first encounter. Looking to get more sacks and recoveries today. Yeah, inexperienced, but a huge athlete and really learning very quickly the game. So now second and nine here. Barnum Knights looking to get their first points of the match. Drops back. Over the middle, broken up. Liam Brown, great play Great by defensive play. That looked like it was going to be a touchdown for it sure. It really did. There's lots of space over the middle. The QB saw the gap, but Liam Brown says no. I think the QB's thrown that a little bit behind him, really, there. If he'd led him a little bit more, I think he would have been clean in for a touchdown there. Definitely, definitely. Brown leaves his feet, knocks the ball down. Brings up third down. So here we are, third and long. Olympians threatening pressure. Looks like they might have jumped the gun a little bit there. Let's see what the ref says. Discipline's a massive part of the game, especially in these third down situations. There's a big difference between third and four and third and 14, for example, isn't there? This call start, offense number 87. goes against the offense, penalty. makes it third Replay and 14. Third yeah, I think the Knights are trying to draw the, uh, the Olympians offside, but apparently someone moved. I can't say I saw it myself there. I'm not sure what number they called there either. Unlucky for the Farnham Knights. Leaves them in a third and long situation here. And probably out of field goal range now as well. Pass is completed, but a massive hit there from Tendaya de Bengua. Stops him short. 
Knights will surely go for it. Pulls down. They really do need some points here, so. Be about fourth and five. Looks like it. Olympians offense ready on the sideline. They want to get back on the field and try and score some more points. But Crucial play for the Knights here. Massive play now, yeah. Both sides. The Olympians wanting to hold on to this shutout that they're currently holding over the Farnham Knights. Drops back. Pass out. And it looks like it's intercepted there in the end zone. The Bangor again. As we said, don't throw it to him. How many interceptions is that now for him? Two? Three? I think I think it's <laughs> made some big plays. Pressure up the middle from Amaru. Makes it really difficult for the quarterback, but T's just in the way there. That should give the Olympians the ball on the 20-yard line on the touchback. So really unfortunate for the Farnham Knights not to come away with any points after their first good drive of the match. Yeah, encouraging drive. It shows what they can do. And the majority of their yards on that drive, as we said, coming from Sequala, their running back. So here we are again. London Olympians, first and ten. Handed off. Couple of yards gained. Not much to talk about there, unfortunately. Good, good defense from the Knights, stopping the run. So the play is uh, on our offense being called by offensive coordinator Mike Dunson today. He's a, a veteran of Britball, and uh, one interesting thing about him is he he was starred on the Farnham Knights team of 2004 that ended the Olympians. Uh, did he really? Did. I did not know that. He, uh, he played for the Olympians early in his career, then gone to Europe. Then he and the head coach Neil Edwards came back from Europe, decided uh, they wanted a new challenge, joined the Knights. They and were part <laughs> of the team that brought down the Olympians' long run of championships. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Hegney on the slant, running away there, dragging the defender with him. Managed to scrag his shirt and eventually bring him down on the halfway line. It looked like he was doing a sled pull there for a while, though. He was just running with him on his back. He is a strong receiver. Must be a nightmare to play against. It's that catch and pierce. He gets the ball, instantly looks upfield, and just moves, moves his legs, keeps that low body position. Really difficult to bring him down. And then driving those legs upfield, eventually the defender manages to scrag him. Handed off to Ben Amawako, manages to find a gap, pushes through, breaks a couple of tackles, and again, all the way up to the 40-yard line now. It's going to be second and two. Really mixing up the Olympians' offense with the threats, both the running game and the passing game. And as we said as well, when your quarterback can also move, it's really difficult to defend against. Yeah, the Knights aren't going to have much luck here unless they can really put some pressure up the middle. When the uh, offensive line giving the team time, making holes with the run game, the Farnham Knights D-line, they really need to start pushing through, shedding those blocks, and putting some pressure on the Olympians in the backfield. Toss play, out to Ben. Amawaka manages to get the first down. There's a flag on the play. Gets out of bounds. Flag is where there's, a, there's normally a holding. Yeah, flag ball. in the backfield there. Might pull it back to second and seven. Excuse me. Holding, offense number 72. 10 yard penalty from the second previous Second and 12, spot. 10 yard. Replay second down. <laughs> Another holding penalty. It's, a, it's, a, it's relatively inexperienced. Offensive line here, apart from a see, couple of veterans. You can see there, grabbing onto his shirt, not letting him go. Ref's always going to see that. It's about the picture you paint to the referee. If he can see your fist clenched <laughs> around the D-lineman's shirt, he's always going to call it. You don't give him an option. 
That's right. There must be a, a lot of holding that goes on that never gets seen. How, How you sneaky doing? you can be. <laughs> Takes the hand off over the middle there to Jamie Gallagher. The big tight end rumbles forwards for looks like a first down and a great yardage on that play. You see he's happy with that. Nice high tempo passing for the Olympians here. They're getting the ball out of the, the QB's hands really quick. Uh, not hanging around. Little fake. Yeah, really fast release. Pops it over to the tight ends. Great play. Sit down, says Jamie. Unfortunately, he rolls over himself. I'm sure he'll be happy with that. So now the London Olympians rolling forwards again. It's going to be first and ten into the Farnham Knights half. Coming towards the end of this first half. Flaho rolls out to his right. Looking deep. Reception there from Jamie Gallagher again and another first down. Looks like we might be pausing for some injury here, unfortunately. See Gallagher getting involved. He hasn't had many catches so far this year. He's a converted uh, offensive lineman uh -huh. on the offensive line last season. And it makes him a great threat as a tight end because obviously he knows exactly what to do in the running game. Yeah, he, he's crucial in the uh, outside runs. He, he, he sets the edge, gets the running backs outside him. He's, he's a really smart footballer as well, he and he can make great catches, really good with his hands. And uh, have you seen the size of him? Very difficult to bring down. Big and fast. <laughs> what a weapon. So there's a knight down. He seems, seems OK, but the uh, medical team are checking him out. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Appears to be pointing to his shoulder. What can the Farnham Knights do to try and stop the London Olympians' flow now then? They really just need to start making tackles here in this backfield, don't they? Pushing oh, yeah. through. They need, they, they need a turnover. They need to make something happen. They, need they had points on offense in the first match, didn't they, as you said? Um, they did. They, their defense made defense, some plays sorry. last time yeah. round. Start doing so too. Number 90 walks off the field. He's okay. It's good to see that he's all right. And now we're ready to go again. The London Olympians lining up here. First down. The red zone offense once again. Spend lots of time in the week practicing the red zone offense, I'm sure. Let's see how that work has paid off today. Flaho with a designed run. Doesn't look for the pass, goes straight through. Finds a little gap, but he's brought down after a gain of nothing, I think. Maybe one or two. Looks like this could be an option. Oh no, maybe a design run. He didn't seem to look anywhere else anyway. Uh, Could just be that he saw the gap and went straight for it. Second and eight now. Something slowed the game down for a moment here. Not sure what the hold up is. <laughs> And we're ready to go. Officials may be checking the uh, clock at the moment. Yeah, we should be coming close to the two-minute warning, but I'm not sure. Like, as we say, we're not sure if this clock is... This is an estimate of the actual time that the referees have been keeping. been told that the uh, the clock is mostly accurate <laughs> okay Olympians lining up the tight end again looks like oh they're gonna pass it over the top to Jamie Gallagher and he manages to oh almost snatched it out of the air but good work from the defensive back there number 85 again having a good game on defense. making it difficult for the Olympians Good pressure up the middle. Oh. 
Just can't hang on. Unfortunate. You can see Jamie is annoyed at himself there. Couldn't grab that one. But good work from the defense. Olympians play, Olympians play limping off the field here. Emmanuel Blair. Hopefully he's okay, the offensive line. One of the Olympians' new recruits on the offensive line. They really had to rebuild their offensive line this offseason. A couple of departures. They found some big, talented guys to fill the gaps. Yeah, it's, it's good to see new guys hungry for work coming in and wanting to learn. I was one of them myself this year. Hey, you'll have to tell us a little bit more about your story as the game goes on. Arthur rolls out to his right and runs it straight. Oh, and he hurdles all over the defensive back. What a play from the London Olympian quarterback. What an athlete. Scenes here at Askia's RFC. Highlight reel. Olympian sideline where we're sat is, is going wild at the moment. Look at this. Real great elevation, proper wow. athletic skill. <laughs> Wonderful from Arthur Flaho. I put some uh, first and goal. Hands off to Ben Amahaka. Runs it in untouched. That's another touchdown for the London Olympians. Looking to better their score from the first match, first half of the first match this year. How many points did they score in that? They scored 37. 37. Oh. Offense number 85. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. It's unlucky for the London Olympians. A holding call against them is going to put, pin them back to another 10 yards and negate that touchdown. That is also the two minute warning. It's called against the uh, wide receiver there, Angel Marin, holding on to the defender, allowing Ben Amawaka to be able to go in untouched. So, first and goal still from somewhere around the 12 yard line. Aired out into the corner. Pegney with the completion. Did he keep his feet in bounds? That's too long. Too back. long. Ah. Nice try from the Olympians' offense there. Going back to the fade route that they scored one of their touchdowns on. Cornerback gets turned around. It was just slightly too long. Uh, overthrown there, unfortunately. So we're going to go second and goal now. Farnham Knights looking to try and hold out here on defense. Stop the Olympians from scoring more points. They've struggled to do that so far in this game. Laho with another pass. Oh, Jamie Gallagher couldn't quite get his head round and find the ball there, unfortunately. Just got bumped off his route at the crucial yeah. point. Good work from the defense. Puts us in a third and long situation, third and goal. You can see here at the bottom of your screen, defender just manages to knock Jamie Gallagher off balance. Can't get to the ball in time on the out route. So now, third and goal. Really important that the Farnham Knights don't concede more points here from their perspective. Got a good opportunity. Arthur Flaho rolls out to his right. He's looking to use his athletic ability again. He's knocked out of bounds. Just shy of the goal line. It's going to be fourth and goal. Yeah. Looks like the Olympians may go for this. I don't see any kicking team coming in. Doesn't look like it. You can see Arthur running along the sideline here, just nudged out of bounds just before he can stretch out and get the ball over the line. Just 
So they're going for it here on fourth down. QB staying on the field. Let's see what they try here. Got a tight end in the game on the right-hand side. Going to throw it out to the left. Oh, that looks like a catch. If he's managed to hold on to that, wow. Luke Hegney down on the ground there. That was a reaches down catch. and snatches the ball up. Terrific work from the wide receiver there. Got his hands under the ball. Just a quick slant route on the left side. Gets the ball out quick after turning around and really well held on to by the big Luke Hegney. Going for the extra point. Victor Alamidi. Snap. Hold. Punt. Is good. And it is 32 points to nil here. To the London Olympians. Running away with it in the first half, as they did in the first game against the Farnham Knights this season. Terrific work from them so far. Couldn't have gone much better so far. And let's see if they can keep up the pace here in the second half when we get to that, because that was the issue in the first match, wasn't it? As you said, 37 points in the first half, only two in the second half. So they will want to try and uh, yeah, keep up the pace. I'm, I'm sure we will see them start to rotate their bench even further. Uh, so it'll be a huge opportunity for the guys coming on to show what they can do too, keep the momentum going. Yeah, absolutely. So not long left in the first half here. Coach Al Tate ready for the kickoff. Let's see if he goes for that short kickoff again as he did in the uh, previous one. We've got Rich Balderson asking us if he's getting name checked. We have we have name checked you, Rich. We have name checked you and your tattoo. <laughs> so we've got a return here from the Farnham Knights, but he's brought down around the 20 yard line. Uh, good work from the special teams there. Danny Tinker on the tackle. Okay, let's see if Farnham can get anything from this drive at the end of the first half here. They're going to have to move the ball down the field really quickly to try and get something out of it, but they've got to hope that they don't do anything silly in the process and give away any interceptions, turnovers, anything that would really hurt them now. They're going to air it out to start with and picked off straight away. Commentators curse. Joel Chunza are going to take it all the way back, perhaps. Giving the Olympians chance for yet more points and an opportunity to better their score from the first half of the first game of the season between these two sides. Uh, Tunes are loves playing like so you always comes up big internet. Well, the big interception from here. And it's gonna be first and goal for the London Olympians. You see here, like I say, they wanted to try and move the ball down the field quick, but the ball's in the air for a really long time. It could have been picked up by either one of the London Olympians players there. Chianza takes the ball on the run. It's just a miss throw from the quarterback. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to go down the sideline yeah. where he might have an opportunity, but the ball just comes out of his hand badly, flutters, flutters into the hands of the safety. Would have been nice to see Joel Chianza with a hurdle there as well. <laughs> Try and copy his QB, but oh well. Not everyone can do that. <laughs> Not quite as leggy as Arthur Flaho. The Olympians with a chance to better their 37-point mark from last time. Lining up with four receivers. Luke Hegney in motion, dropped the snap, pounced on by Ben Namawaka. Oh, by the O-lineman, sorry, excuse me. Mark Matthews there, <laughs> recovering the ball. Quarterback obviously wasn't expecting the snap when it came. A little bit of miscommunication there. Leaves them in a second down situation with the clock ticking. Time out Called by the Olympians. They're first at 48 seconds, 0 4 8. And yeah, the Olympians take a timeout to stop the clock on 48 seconds left remaining in this first half. I think that's their first time out with the half. 
They just want to try and make sure they can put the nail in the coffin at the end of this first half here with some more points. Really good to see the Olympians firing on offense from a perspective of an Olympian supporter and player, obviously. But unfortunate not to see the Farnham Knights really competing in the same way that we hope they might do today. No, no, after their victory over the Kent Exiles, we, yeah. uh, we're it expecting like them to, uh, to really show something today, but they've, they've come out on a little bit flat, we have to say. Mm -hmm. It looked like their season was going to turn around, perhaps, after, like you say, the win against the Exiles, who have been looking really strong in their first season here in uh, the Premiership South. Yeah, of course, the Exiles have beaten the Aztecs, and the Aztecs have beaten the Olympians. There's a bit of a merry-go-round of results at the moment. In this Which could make division. things very interesting at the end of the season. Handed off to Ben Amawaka anyway, and again, runs in untouched. Let's see if there's a, anyone going to be called for anything here, or if we're going to let these stand. It's going to be a touchdown. And here we are, 38 points to nil, with the extra points still to come. Once again, you've got the tight end, Jamie Gallagher, setting the edge along with right tackle number 53. Really good there. work from yeah, the offensive line, the receivers, everyone doing their job there to make sure that Ben Marker has a clear path into the end zone. So, Victor Olamidi for one more point to make it 39-0 here in the first half. Managed to just about grab the hold there and get it through the uprights. No, not much pressure from the Knights really there on special yeah, teams. Yeah, a great hold by Dami Agbabiaka, the, uh, the quarterback and holder there. And we've got a few seconds left, I believe, in the, in the first half. You wonder what the Farnham Knights might try and do with the short amount of time left here is it wise to throw the ball up in the air and take some more risks or do you think maybe they should just try and run the ball out and go in for the half-time break yeah given what happened last time i think it's uh it'd be wise just to, to run the ball run out the clock see if you can regroup at half time have to see if the london olympians can uh pin the knights back on the uh kickoff here Al Tate booting the ball down the field nice long kickoff fielded by number 15 of the Farnham Knights manages to break one tackle but is brought down deep in his own territory with very little time remaining in the first half 15 takes it after the bounce First defender comes flying in, but just misses. And then scragged by two more. Three more. Make no mistake, we're going to bring him down. The uh, Knights take the field. We have to give a shout out to uh, Askian Rugby Football Club today. They have provided chain crew and the ball boys. Uh, and the facilities, the pitch here is Askian's RFC's home ground. Historic rugby club in uh, southeast London. Thank you very much to them for their continued support with us this season. I know maybe we'll be able to get some players from the rugby team. I think we've been talking about doing that both ways. And it's picked off by Joel Chiunza again. The same play, the same pick, and he's running back, he's slowing down there. Doesn't know where to go with the ball. Uh, have we just got the video on a loop here? I, I, I think we just saw the same Was that play. a replay? <laughs> Joel with his third pick of the match, I believe. The only thing that differed was how he got tackled. That was uh, exactly the same pass attempted, exactly the same pick off. And it's going to give the London Olympians an opportunity for even more points at the end of the first half. There are 12 seconds remaining here. Got a new High quarterback the coming in here from the uh, Olympians. Ah, Artem Bakamanidis is going to take over for the end of the first half. See if he can... Uh, continue in the same vein that Arthur Flaho did. So, Bakamanidis in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Toss out to Ben Amawaka. Trying to find a gap. Pushes out wide. There's a flag. And he's brought down, taken out of bounds. Probably another holding.
Let's see what the refs call on that one. Like you say, the vicinity of the flag looks like it could very well be holding. Holding, offense number 43, taking our penalty from the spot of the foul. You replay first down, the clock will restart on the ready for play. Yeah, holding against number 43, that's the running back Nana Pratt there, unfortunately. So going to be a 10 yard penalty. A few seconds left. It looks like the clock is running. And it looks like the clock could go dead here if they don't get the ball away quickly. And that is the end of the first half here. Time has expired, I believe. Yeah, it may have been wise for the Olympians to call time out there because the clock only stopped temporarily after the flag there. The ref was very clear that the clock would restart on the whistle. Time has expired in the first half. Yeah. Okay then, so it is half time here at Askins RFC, London Olympians 39. Farnham Knights, nil. They're going to need something special to be able to turn this around and get something to be proud about this game, aren't they, the Knights? Yeah, it's hard to see where it's going to come from, but uh, so you, you ha we have had some of these games in the past where one team dominates one half, one team the other. But Yeah, we can't have the London Olympians getting complacent and uh, taking their foot off the gas because, as you say, if we can score 39 points in one game, in one half, then so can they. It can happen. Um, for now, anyway, thank you very much for tuning in to watch this game today. We'll be back later on with the second half for the London Olympians versus the Farnham Knights. Thank you.
keyhole. Well, uh, the bloke said if it had been any bigger, it would have been a three inch. And well, I assume it's a keyhole. I haven't actually heard the definitely how much it was. Mine right. was a bucket handle, so it split. Like that. So it was a jet attached to each side. So. And all I did was kick a ball. Exactly. So anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, that, well, that was about three years later, I was playing this. <laughs> so, but yeah. Right, we're going to be back in about 10 minutes, so I'm going to get a quick drink. See? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I'll play, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try and come and get some conditioning with you guys. Yeah, 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 get some, get some, some weight. <laughs>
And then the first, first scrum covered a snake. Do you want a chair, sir? Do you want a chair? No, I'm all right, thank you. Sure. Just watching you get me fresh. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the London Olympians Farnham Knights kickoff here at the second half. We've been fielded the catch there, finds a little bit of a gap, and it's brought down by the London Olympians. The Farnham Knights are going to get the ball here to start in the second half. Just so you're all aware, folks, the clock here in the second half is going to run and only stop for injuries and timeouts as a result of the score at the moment. I think it's uh, what, a 35-point gap when we go to a running clock. So, yeah, mercy time, as they call it. Knights with the ball over the middle, but receiver couldn't get his head around and pick it up. I think both of the defensive backs thought that the other one was going to try and pick it there.
Quick slant to the tight end or the slot receiver. But again, the ball coming out a bit wobbly out of the quarterback's hands. Yeah, it doesn't quite have that nice tight spiral that you like to see, is it? So the Farnham Knights, second and 10, 25 yard line. Callum Brown drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, finds a bit of a gap. Ooh, manages to truck Jonathan Cobham, sit him down on his backside. Big quarterback. Decent he game from the QB there. Pressure from Willing there, but steps up, finds a running lane, gains about six yards. Good work from the Olympians' defense to bring him down in the end. That's Michael Omeru with the tackle, number 40. Timeout called by Farnham. They're first of the second half at 12.51. Farnham have called a timeout here early in the second half. Seems interesting. Yeah, not sure what that's about. They obviously need to uh, get something sorted. Michael Murray making the tackle there. He's a he's another long-time Olympian. Joined in 2008. He's been to America since there. Come back. He joined his old team. And making waves again this season. Really important play there by him to bring down the QB. Short of first down. We've got another shout out to do, being a rugby venue here. We've got to say a shout out to the uh, England University Sevens, a student rugby team. They're going to be playing in the 24 Sevens tournament in Nottingham next Saturday. I believe they uh, managed to do pretty well in that competition previously, and they're looking to do well again this year. Okay, so we're back here. Barnum Knights running the ball. And it looks like they've got enough for a first down there. A big running back. I believe that's Sequala. Flag down there. Could be holding. in the vicinity of holding. 66 offense for the takedown. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. Yeah, holding against. Number 66 oh. from the Farnham Knights. Again, yeah. apologies, we do have not managed to acquire a Farnham Knights roster here today. So 66. maybe you guys know who they are, but we don't. Yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of Knights fans yeah. watching today who can would be able to tell us exactly who's who. But uh, fortunately, we don't have it to hand. As a as a painful penalty for the Knights, uh, they, uh, they converted a third down. Now they've got a third and long. Yeah, that kind of ill discipline. It really does push a team back. Literally and figuratively. So third and long. Callum Brown takes a snap, airs it out on the right hand side. Complete. And it is complete to number 84 from the Farnham Knights with a big reception and a massive first down there. That's a great read from the quarterback. He saw the, uh, the, the, the Olympians linebacker Cobham go out to cover a wide receiver and he looked straight that way. He knew he had a receiver against a linebacker. Put the ball up high down the field. Nice play. Really good read, good matchup. And an important tackle made by Liam Brown at the end of that play. Coach, head coach Neil Edwards of the Olympians now shout, shouting instructions to his defense. You can see Edwards in the picture there, very nicely turned out in a coaching uniform. They're provided by Ace Performance. Fake the toss from Callum Brown and then uh, spikes the ball. Um, uh, some calls from the Olympian sideline for intentional grounding there, but the referee is clar clarifying immediately there was a receiver in the area. <laughs> yes, for those of you who aren't aware, if the QB quarterback throws the ball at the ground, there must be a receiver in the vicinity of that pass or it is called as intentional grounding and that would be a penalty against the offensive team. I must say he was only just in the vicinity there. Mm, it's uh, Pretty intentional to me, but... Judged to be an attempted pass this time.
So second and ten for the Farnham Knights. Rolled out to the right, but couldn't have the accuracy to find the receiver there. The pressure again. <laughs> Going to be third down now for the Farnham Knights after that incomplete pass. Pressure from uh, Jonathan Cobham and Marco McKendy, that's that. Third and long here. Farnham QB airs it out, and it's another, another great completion. And he's broken away from a couple of tackles, and he's going to run it all the way into the end zone. That is a touchdown for the Farnham Knights, and they'll be very happy to see that. That's the, uh, the Knights' uh, passing game beginning to click on this drive. Disappointing missed tackles from the Olympians there after the, after the reception. I believe that's Godfrey on the reception. They've been trying that post route all day, and see, finally a, it pays off. Yeah, and there's a couple of guys there ready to make a tapple, tackle, but unfortunately Danny Tinker there with the missed tackle couldn't quite scrag him. Knights presumably will go for two here as they try to close the gap. And yeah, the two-point attempt is unsuccessful. It's going to be 39-6 here in the third quarter. As the, uh, the score difference is now less than 35 points, we will be stopping the clock as and when necessary, as usual. Um, that 35-point mark is the mercy boundary. So apologies for you who are watching this and wishing it was over. Well, I don't know if anyone is now. Maybe of the course they're not. Are a little bit um, revived after that drive. That I'm sure my mum is sitting at home watching this, wondering when's it going to end. But <laughs> other than that, hi, Will's mum. Yeah. While we we're talking about you, Will, you're a, you uh, started playing this sport this year. And, I did, yeah. I, I wanted to get involved, and I uh, had a little look around which teams are closest to me. I'm based here in Elton. Uh, where we are today, which is the home of the London Olympians home ground. So I got in touch, went down for a couple of practices in pre-season in December and uh, started playing. Simple as that. Then you, uh, you, you were forced to stop playing, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately I, play, I played one match, uh, covered wide receiver, but didn't get on for any snaps at wide receiver, unfortunately. Um, and then, yeah, I kicked, a, kicked, an, kicked an extra point and then got injured. So. <laughs> Maybe next season. Coming back, right? That's the plan, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully uh, the London Olympians will still be in the Premiership. It's looking like with this result that they very well will be. Uh, it's a dominant performance here today against the Farnham Knights. Okay, received by Tendai Devengo in the backfield. He's running it back. He's found some space. He, he might take this all the way. He's got space on the outside. All the way back to the 30-yard line. Incredible return. From the defensive back. Uh, Devengo is a, a great runner. He, he plays cornerback, but I always, uh, when I was quarterback for this team, I always wished he uh, played receiver. He's one of those natural, silky runners. Natural always athlete. manages to find the right kind of space. Look at this. Oh, beautiful running. Slipping past defenders. Really good vision for where the space is on the field. Manages to find space outside. Just needed one more block and could have taken that all the way. Great work from T. Okay, so Artem Bakamanidis hands it off to Ben Amawaka. There's a flag in the backfield, but Ben's still going. Pushing forwards, driving those legs and out of bounds. Looks like a holding penalty against the London Olympians. Holding, offense number 78. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, replay first down. So it's going to be 
first and 20 Correct. after that holding five. penalty on Victor Olamidi. Holds his hands up as if he's done nothing, but the referee must have seen something. Maybe him holding his hands up is what gave it away. Okay, so first and 20 for the London Olympians. Bachmanidis in the backfield. Takes the shotgun snap over the middle. Ooh, and it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of the receiver there. Bachmanidis is an interesting story. He, uh, he joined the Olympians back in 2008 and played several seasons as a linebacker. Uh, then played for the Wembley Stallions. And then uh, had a conversion, decided he was going to not be a linebacker anymore, but play quarterback. He's doing an excellent job. He's uh, really uh, learned the position quickly. He's got a great command of this offense. Do yes. you think that his knowledge of the defensive side of the game really helps his quarterback? I, I think that's massive, actually. It's, I, I always only ever played quarterback, and I always wished I understood a little bit more about what it was like to play on the other side of the ball. Yeah, it can only be helpful if you can read a defense because you know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, you you know exactly what scares you about an offense. Mm -hmm. and you can see you can see the patterns. You can identify a cover two defense, cover one defense. Understand exactly who's where and whose job is what, and it probably helps you identify favorable matchups. I would imagine it does, and that's what Backmanidis brings to this offense. He's, he's, he's very committed, very passionate, and he understands. And a very the game. intelligent player, yeah. We're going to be third and 20 here, though, for the London Olympians. It's looking uh, <laughs> like a tough task here to try and get another first down and continue this drive. So it's the play action as out on the right. Paris Pashman with an easy walk-in touchdown. Beautiful play on there. I don't know if that was a, a, a fake or an option play. They, they went for the handoff, and Paris Pashman was wide open. Wide open there. I mean, the ball, it kind of wobbled out of Bachmanese's hand a little bit, but there was no threat from the defensive back there, was there? You know, sometimes the hardest passes to throw are the ones where the receiver is wide open. You get nervous, but he puts it in the right place. Yep. And all Paris has to do is pull that in Easy and catch. wander into the end zone. Excellent work from the London Olympians offense. No threat of slowing down here in the second half. So Victor Olamidi back on for the extra point attempt. There's a flag here on the kick. It looks like that maybe might be a... A, a running into the kicker or roughing the kicker penalty, which is a very serious kind of penalty in this game. Basically, you cannot touch the kicker. The kick was good. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense number 35. That 15 yard penalty be assessed on the kickoff. The result of the try was good. So the extra point was good, which takes the score to 46 points to six. And the roughing the kicker penalty, as they say, will be enforced on the kickoff. So wherever the Farnham Knights get the ball from, they will then have to start 15 yards further back. That's not going to help them. No, this will almost certainly mean them starting their drive from their 20-yard line or worse. Yeah, in fact, no, the kickoff starts 15 yards further forward, excuse me. So there's a very good chance of uh, Al Tate here being able to kick the ball straight out the back of the end zone and pinning the Farnham Knights back to a 20-yard start for their next offensive drive. He might try a shorter kick and try and see if he can pin them back even closer. If they can be brought down on the return within the five-yard line, that would be really useful for the London Olympians' offense. Defense, excuse me. He does go for a slightly shorter kick. Doesn't give them the option of taking a knee, but it's returned by the Farnham Knights. He's found a massive hole, and Al Tate has to try and make a tackle, almost. He's brought down eventually by number 24, that's George Moore Arthur. But the Farnham Knights here are coming all the way back into London Olympians' territory. I guess they should have kicked it out the back of the end zone. 
It was a nice attempt from the London Olympians, trying to be uh, a little bit too maybe greedy with that play. A couple of missed tackles. And unfortunately, that means that the Farnham Knights are going to start with the ball on the London Olympians' 40-yard line. You know, there's so, probably some people cursing you for saying unfortunately. Apologies. <laughs> Can't help it. <laughs> I'm going to be unbiased from now on. Lies. Oh. Big hit there. The running back managed to Sequala managed to stay on his feet after the thundering hit. Didn't wrap the arms and so just bounced off him and ran around out the corner. Oh, he's a strong running back, isn't he? He really is. He's a proper threat on their team and something that they really could and should use more. Uh, Hanif Bambi with the hit. Sokolo keeps his feet going. Gains a few more yards on the end of the play. Runs into coach Neil Edwards, who I'm sure wanted to drop the shoulder. Oh, Neil Edwards was a ferocious player. I don't know. I've seen him tackle with and without pads on. I've played with and against him, and I, I can tell you, playing with him is a, is a lot more fun. And that's going to be a sack of really not what the uh, Farnham Knights needed there. You've got Emeka with the massive sack there. Held up by Sam Willing as well. Emeka Anyogbu just finishes the job. Marco McKendie in there as well. So it's going to be third down and nine after that loss of yards. Callum Brown drops back to pass into the receiver. Slips away from the tackle. Might have just done enough to make a first down there. We'll see where the ref spots the ball. It's going to be very close. Yeah. Might have to come and measure that one. We'll have a, a good chain measure. Keeps it exciting. Little hook They're going to move the chains Green. by the looks of it. Breaks the tackle of Dibengo. Yep, definitely there. Manages to get to the first down. And it's going to be Farnham Knights now with first and 10 on the 31 yard line. First and 10 for Farnham. Callum Brown jobs back to pass. Flies the ball into the receiver there. It's uh, Godfrey again with a reception and a five yard gain. Go to receiver today, it looks like. He does seem like the main man in the passing game. They're going for the, uh, the hook route again. It's been a safe pair of hands for them, just really well to keep that ball up off the turf. Close coverage from Debengua, but nothing you can do to stop a, a well executed pass like that. Clearly, he must have friends at the house. This is a second and five. Farnham Knights closing in on some red zone offense. High snap, taken well by the quarterback. Looks like I might be broken up there. Or has that been, that's been caught again by Godfrey. Another gain, two or three yards on that one. Very well taken by the receiver there. Under good pressure from Dabengwa, but unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> picked up by the receiver. Over the top this time to no one in particular. A little bit of miscommunication there, perhaps. It's the uh, fourth play in the row. The uh, quarterback looking for Godfrey there. Uh, obviously has a lot of confidence in his receiver. Anyone who's played quarterback will know when you have a guy you really trust, you uh, like to go to him. 
Yeah, the quarterbacks, they always want to get completions. And if they know you can catch the ball, they know that you're going to be a reliable weapon for them in the offense. They're going to throw it to you more. But yeah. again, obviously, the defense knows that. And they're going to put their best man up against you. So. Fourth and three. And they're going for it here. Farnham Knights looking to get some points here in the third quarter. Trying to get it. Oh, and the Handing the ball to Godfrey this Godfrey time. this time. Running through. I think he might have just done enough there for the first down. The flag down on the plate too. Flag in the vicinity of holding, perhaps, there. It's good to see the Farnham Knights come out this half with a little bit more composure as well. They look like they've got a bit more time on the ball. The quarterback's managing to get some accurate passes away. Holding, 87 offense, penalty has been declined, result of play, it's a first down. It was a holding penalty there, so as it was fourth down, the ball's going to be turned over. The Olympians have declined that penalty, meaning they get to take the ball here as the runner did not quite get enough for the first down on the play. Another decent drive from the Knights, and it was, it was really the Godfrey show, wasn't it? I think it was five plays in a row. He went to yeah, the, a number reception after reception after reception, and then a run. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get the job done there, the Knights. So here we are, the London Olympians, back when Edis in at quarterback again. And let's see if they can get some more points here in the third quarter. Screen pass thrown out wide to Mark. He manages to break a few tackles, make some space. I know it's wide open on the left-hand side. Let's see if he's got the speed to go all the way. He's been chased down, chased down on the left. Oh! And he's brought down just shy. I do believe his knee was down there. He couldn't get closer than that, surely. Didn't quite have the gas. Oh, Had the it. strength to break the tackles, but was, that, that was pursued a good tackle. intently. I was sure he was gone there. He was pitting on the burners. Very quick pass out to the left. Little screen. Beats one. Beats another. Manages to find a little gap. Another tackle missed. And then number 35 is flying down. You see the angle that he's going to there to try and catch him. Manages to grab hold of him here. And a look at his knee goes down just, ooh, just about, I think. Yeah, the receiver touches the pylon, but his knee's already down. Maybe a yard or two short. He's claiming it, but... The refs are going to call him down just short. It's going to be first and goal to the London Olympians. Another huge play there from the Olympians' offense. The quarterbacks, they love those plays, don't they? Because they, they, they do a three-yard pass, lateral, and the receiver does all the work, and they get all the point, all, all the yards oh, on there. Oh, it looks fantastic on <laughs> the, the stats sheet. Must be a few really points helps on your QB quarterback rating. rating. Yeah. Well done, Art and Bakamanidis. The play they've gone to several times, a little outside screen to mark. There's a, uh, got a, got a, got a child on the pitch. <laughs> uh, anyone know whose child that is? Okay, I admit, it's mine. My child is on the pitch, he's running. We'll just, just get them out of the yes. way and then... Come, uh, on, come on, grandparents, do your job. <laughs> We should be ready to start again, momentarily. Okay, so we've got London Olympians, first and goal. <laughs> Clock restarting here. Got Paris Parchment on the right-hand side of your screen lined up. On the open side of the field there, there's a lot more space there. Let's see if he might get the ball here. Artem does go to him. Paris snatches it out of the air, touchdown. touchdown. Beautiful play. Second touchdown. Called it. Minas to Parchman. He did call it. <laughs> you ever thought of going into coaching? <laughs> Maybe one day. I'm a bit young. <laughs> Takes the snap, looks straight to him, releases the ball nice and early, and Paris up in the air, snatches it straight out of the defender's hands. Doesn't give him a chance. Strong hands from Paris there. Great work from the wide receiver slash defensive back. And now Victor Olamidi with a chance to make it 53 points to six. Hasn't missed one yet. That's probably me jinxing it. Let's see. Yeah. Oops. Oh, he's, oh he might go for two. He's got it. They're going to go for it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, 
Oh, make what that man a into play a from the Olympians. Let's see that little pitch. The awareness from Victor Olamide there to be able to think, yep, yeah, I might not be able to rumble in, but I know who can. Pitches <laughs> the ball to Luke Hegney, who does the job. Time has expired in the third Wonderful quarter. work. And that is the end of the third quarter here. It's 54 points to six. Have a look at this again. Okay, so we get a good block there from the Farnham Knights. The ball pops back down into Olamide's hands. He hands <laughs> off a player, has a look, goes, no. Nah. And look at that. He's been practicing. Oh. He has been practicing. And look, Hegney, no one in, in between it. <laughs> <laughs> Little jump into the end zone for good measure. And that's two point conversion there for the London Olympians. <clears throat> 54 points to six. Wow, we're going to be hearing about that play from Victor for a long, long time to come, I can tell you that. He'll be claiming both of those points. <laughs> so, 15 minutes remaining in this encounter, the uh, Premiership South of the British American Football Association's League. I'll take to kick off. Olympians have a 50 burger, is that what it's called? A 50, 50 burger, burger, indeed. This will move us up the power rankings. Good tackle there from the Olympians, stopping the return. Harry Dowdle, number 90. And Simon David, number 50. Uh, let's see what the Farnham Knights can do here. They looked good on offense on the last drive, but they couldn't quite convert into points. Yeah, the game's out of reach for the Knights now, but there's still a lot to play for in terms of uh, fixing some things on offense, getting mm -hmm. some momentum going into the next game. And also pride. And pride. Obviously, the uh, head coach there, number 56, he'll want to see his team not give up. Quarterback there with the uh, play action, takes it himself, runs it out wide, but no gain. Brought down by Evo de Grief, stalwart linebacker defense. And it's going to be Second down for the Farnham Knights. There's a player down on the field, though. Looks like an Olympian. We'll just be pausing for a moment whilst we uh, check that he's OK. Seems to be moving. That's uh, Shaquille Peters. He's getting up. Shaq's going to take a breather. Hopefully we'll see him back on the field soon. It's been great on the Olympians' defensive line this year, really making plays. And it's been a great leader for the team as well. Yeah, the Olympians' defensive line lost a couple of players to Europe. We had uh, Remy Daniels going to the German Football League, Jack Brennan going to the Finnish League, and uh, really relied on uh, new guys stepping in, and Shaquille has been the man. Through the hands of the receiver there, and a pass over the middle from Farnham Knights. Does well here to get the ball out nice and quick, but receiver couldn't pull it in. Just a little high. <laughs> so we've got third and nine here for the Farnham Knights. They really want to try and do something here to keep the ball rolling forwards in this fourth quarter. Callum Brown looks to pass, gets the ball out eventually, but to no one in particular. And that's going to be fourth down. Let's see if Farnham want to try and make something of this or if they're just going to punt and give another chance to the Olympians to score some more points. Got a uh, tweet there, let's go O's. 
Hashtag Baffer if you want to get in touch with us today. It's uh, Super Hands. I believe that's uh, Gabenka Brown, maybe, a uh, long time Olympians player. Uh, fantastic offensive lineman, if he's the same guy I'm thinking of. I believe he's called Super Hands in his uh, social media. So back to punt here. Barnum Knights goes high this time. Hegney's got plenty of time to field it. Uh, he calls a fair catch and takes it. Tackled by his own man. <laughs> Flag on the play. Not sure what the flag's for here. Let's have a little look. During the kick, holding, number 52 on the return team, 10 yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Okay, so it's going to be Olympians ball, but 10 yards further back as a result of a holding penalty here. And it looks like we've got Kirtley and Roberts says some great football being played at the London Olympians and Farnham Knights game. Hashtag Baffer. Again, if you want to get involved today, get in touch with us. Hashtag B-A-F-A -A, Baffer. Okay, so Dami Agbabiaka now for the London Olympians at quarterback. He's the, uh, the youngest of the Olympians three quarterbacks. He's the real threat running the ball. Absolutely. He was playing for the Kent Exiles, I believe, last season. Uh, it's come to join the Olympians this year and has been a real threat. Great ball over the middle there. Angel Marin running away with it. Brought down there eventually. But a, sh <laughs> a, <laughs> a huge gain there. Angel, sorry for spiking the ball. Couldn't help the celebration. <laughs> Way to step in there by Dami, though. It was fresh off the bench. He delivers a beautiful pass here. Good awareness. Manages to step away from pressure find a bit of space and see the receiver coming over the middle. Beautiful ball right into the path. Angel turns his head forwards and runs away upfield. Angel really taking his... Uh, Good block from Paris Parchment to help uh, get the extra yards there. Paris Parchment, of course, a member of the X's and O's podcast team made up of a few players from the Olympians and the Kent Exiles. If you want to check them out, you can find them on Facebook and Spotify. X's and O's. Talking about all things British American football. Dami Agbapiaka here running forwards. As we said, he's a massive threat running with the ball. Then he walks it in for a touchdown in the end. No one could stop him. Oh, Dami's like having an extra running back lining up his quarterback. If, you, uh, if you're a defender and you think you've got an opportunity to put a hit on the quarterback, think again. He's, uh, he's He a knows that if he can run, we're going to score points. Fakes the handoff, sees a gap, and he's gone. Yeah, and as soon as he gets a little step on you here, watch him stretch his legs out here, and he's just gone. There's no way you can get up to him. The design running play from the Olympians, a little uh, middle option. Quarterback keeps the ball. Goes for the touchdown. And Victor Olamidi for yet another extra point. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And yet another point for Victor Olamidi. A little bit more conventional this time, perhaps. <laughs> I appreciate that, thank you. Sir. Rather than the catch, pitch, and two points. Yeah, I preferred the other one. It was a lot more exciting. So 61-6 here now in the final quarter. As you can see, we've got the clock ticking. Um, the mercy clock, as they say. So we were talking a bit about uh, you uh, joining, starting American football this year. Would you uh, recommend it to guys out there who might be watching, thinking I might give this a go? Absolutely. I came from a, a rugby background, having played rugby uh, all my life uh, and playing in London for the London Scottish Academy. Um, and then decided I wanted to give American football a go. Why not? And 
it's it's very similar in lots of ways and a lot of transferable skills when it comes to playing all sorts of different positions. Uh, it's Jas says Kono's killing it. Get the ball to number seven. Tendai de Bengua. <laughs> Tendai de Bengua. He's had the ball quite a lot. Are today. you saying the Knights should throw the ball to <laughs> Tendai? <laughs> okay, so the Farnham Knights on the field in the kick there and runs into a white wall of defenders. It's going to be Farnham Knights ball on the 30 yard line. So yeah, as I was saying, um, any players who play rugby or any sort of contact sport who are thinking about something new, the uh, British American football season plays in the summer. So for rugby players, it's perfect. You can play both. You can uh, play rugby during the winter and come and play American football in the summer. Um, all sorts of teams and all sorts of different divisions across the country. This, of course, is the Premiership South. Doesn't stop you getting involved. Uh, if you're good enough, any team will have you. Um, and there's lots of leagues for people of all abilities if, wanna, if people want to come and have a go, learn to play the game. It's been a great community of people to get involved with here at the London Olympians, and I'm sure lots of other teams are the same. Do you miss playing? I do, I do. There's, there's nothing like it. The, the, Sideline the... warning. It's the defence. That's their first and final warning. There's a warning against the uh, Olympians for some uh, comments from the sidelines, I believe. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd certainly miss the game. There's nothing like being in the, the locker room or being out on the field on a Sunday afternoon with a big bunch of guys. Good completion there to the right receiver. Gain of four or five yards there for the Farnham Knights. Tackle by Hanif Bambi, veteran Olympian defensive back linebacker. Yeah, very strong tackle there. Throws him back a couple of yards, but of course it'll go from his forward progress as far forward as he was when he got tackled. That's where the ball will start. We've got second and five for the Farnham Knights. Intercepted on the sideline by Luke Hegney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ball was thrown out of play there, out of bounds. It's going to be an incomplete pass. <laughs> Big cheer from the sideline for Hegney for pulling in that catch. Makes it third and five here for the Farnham Knights. Knights have really gone to their passing game today. We were talking about um, it earlier where they should have tried to run the ball more, but they, uh, they seem very committed to their passing game here. They've had a bit more, a bit more luck with it in the second half. They have. Uh, I, I say I think they managed to get a little bit more time on the ball. I think maybe their O line is managing to hold off the Olympians' defensive line and uh, make it a bit more difficult for them to find their way through to the quarterback. Meaning he's got a bit more time to kind of find those accurate passes. Hands it off here to the receiver running in motion. Manages to just about make the first down. I think might be close here. Uh, it looks, looks like, like to me it. it's probably a first down. Good running there from. Wilcox, number 15 for the Farnham Knights. A little underneath handoff there. Gets a good block from his head coach, number 60, 56. Always helpful. Pete Too Tall, getting involved. Third start, offense number 56, five yard penalty, and replay first down. That is Pete Tutor with the false start, straight after I tell you how useful he's been. Jinx. Sorry. You can see where he gets his nickname though. Defensive play calls coming in here from head coach and defensive coordinator Neil Edwards. Anyone who's been around the Olympians will be, uh, know exactly who he is. Long time player. And a revelation as a head coach. Extremely passionate. Oh, yeah. Committed. 
He's individual. passionate in all situations, so you can see the score here, 61-6, and he's still calling, telling his defense exactly what to do. And I think it may well have been him that was penalized on the sideline for standing on the field. Um, <laughs> he, does, he, does, he does have a lot of energy and uh, loves to get carried away, but he's an inspiration to all the players here at the London Olympians. He is. He's a, he's a coach who really uh, cares about developing his players. It doesn't matter whether they're staying here or they're going on to play in Europe. Just wants to make guys better. He's a real pleasure to play for. Absolutely. So after the timeout for Farnham, they were going to be back here 61 6 to the London Olympians. Four minutes roughly left in the final quarter here in South East London. Hand off to Godfrey, slips a, tackle, slips a couple of tackles in the backfield, but is brought down. Liam Brown on the tackle. Second and long. Bonham likes uh, liking this little uh, underneath handoff to the slot receiver coming in motion. That time Great tackle from Liam Brown there. Though. Yeah. Uh, as uh, Benga Brown, Aaron the G is silent, still a legend, number 11. <laughs> I think he may be referring to me. Aaron Griffiths, Hall of Fame. <laughs> I'm not in the Hall of Fame. Good pressure on the quarterback there, gives him no option. Ball goes into the dirt. Here we are now, third down, third and long situation for the Farnham Knights. How many times have we said that today? Let's see if they can convert this. Fakes to the receiver in motion, but... Just a little bit too much pressure for that play to come off. Yeah, it was uh, Simon David, the linebacker there, managing to get pressure in the quarterback's face. Third and long. Callum steps up, puts it long, and I have no idea. Did he catch it? <laughs> it's incomplete pass. As far as I can see, the ball disappeared. <laughs> you see this on the replay here, so yeah, he throws it. Deep. There's a defender right there over the top. Manages to knock it out of the hands of Godfrey, the receiver. Liam really Brown. good work from Liam Brown again to make sure that goes incomplete. That will force a final night punt. There's a return by Luke Hegney. He's got a little bit of space. Manages to find a gap. Let's see if he can get some blocks. Keeps his feet. One man to beat on the outside there. He's still going and eventually brought down on the 25-yard line. So, the London Olympians won possibly the final drive of the game here with two minutes remaining. I've got an option to opportunity to try and get even more points. Let's see what they can do here. Time out, my time. The two-minute warning at 153. Excuse me, that's the two-minute warning right there, so it's 1.53 left. We've got another former Olympian quarterback tweeting here, Tommy Liberovic. So it's glad to see London Olympians balling and to hear Aaron getting involved again. Again, hashtag Baffer if you want to get in touch before we finish here in the last couple of minutes. Thank you, Tommy. Agbabiaka takes a snap, throws it out left to the Fran receiver. Popov. Fran Popov, yeah. Brought down. Short gain. Again, the clock's running now, so if they want to get more points, they're going to have to move the ball nice and fast. Good practice here for a kind of two-minute drill. See if they can uh, move the ball at the end of the match. Good reception from the new, uh, new receiver. 
Yeah, it's a great opportunity for the uh, receivers and quarterbacks who haven't got on so much. Agba Biaka rolls out right, gets a pass. Ooh, almost intercepted there from the Farnham Knights. Ah, it was a fumbled the snap there. Seemed to throw it straight into the. I think he was looking for the fullback Nana Pratt. Yeah. Uh, but had his back turned, couldn't quite connect. We are near the end of the game. We should say a huge thank you to Cheers Mate Productions for this excellent production they put on for every Final Farnham Knights game. By the okay, yeah, the they've done a really good job here. They've done a really good job putting all of this together, the camera crew, and uh, thank you very much for coming down here and giving us the opportunity today to showcase the British American football. And thanks for letting the uh, London Olympians have the microphone today. Yeah, thank you very much to the Farnham Knights for that. Apologies to all the Farnham Knights fans for the biased commentary. You know how it is. I must say, I've been uh, living overseas recently, and I, I watched the... Uh, I've been watching these games from the middle of Africa on occasions. I'm um, sure we've got people tuning in from around the world to see what's happening. And of course, it's great as well that if anyone wants to recap any of this, this will be available on YouTube afterwards for your viewing pleasure or despair if you're a Knights fan. One minute 13 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Third and eight for the London Olympians. Dami Agbabiaka back takes the snap looks out right throws the ball to paris parchment in again for yet another touchdown that's paris's third touchdown of the day what a day for him and here we are 67 points to six yeah it's got to be the biggest olympian score line in uh, many a season really good to see the team put together Drive after drive on offense, not slow down. And of three quarterbacks coming in, and they've all produced. Exactly. A variety of receivers, running backs, O linemen, and quarterbacks, and still managing to score points. What can Victor give us on this extra point? Let's see if we get any more excitement or just a normal kick. <laughs> it's up. It's good. 68 points to six. And it looks like the clock will expire here momentarily that is likely to be the final score here today thank you very much to everyone again for tuning in uh, we do appreciate it that is full time on that play that's the end of the game thank you very much for tuning in again thank you to cheers made productions and thank you to farnham knights congratulations london olympians 68 farnham knights six Uh, so yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Will Gosnold, and uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I've been Aaron Griffiths. Thank you very much for tuning in. Goodbye. <laughs>